Commissioner Ngoyedo. Uh, yes, um, thank you, Chief Justice. Um, the problem, Ms. Andrews, that I am grappling with right now is I just don't know how to assess your, your candidature and your knowledge of the principles of administrative law. Because on the two administrative law questions that were asked by Commissioner Boshoff, uh, you didn't do well. So I just want to re-ask those questions in a practical way, not in an exam type way, and just test what your grasp of these principles is, especially because you're trying to become a judge in Cape Town, which is basically the, the, the seat of parliament, where probably 60% of civil cases are public law cases. So let's start with the first one, which is the outer one. Let us assume that uh, you are preparing to come to your interview here at the JSC, and a political party brings an interdict to stop the JSC from interviewing you. And we know that the process of interviews is provided for in section 178 uh, of the Constitution in terms of the uh, 174 of the Constitution, 165 of the Constitution. So when the JSC is interviewing you, it's exercising an original constitutional power. And somebody says, I want an interdict against the JSC from interviewing Ms. Andrews. What do they have to show on the outer principles in order to succeed? And the case came before you. What would you require the applicants to show in order to succeed? Um, the applicants will have to show a clear or prima facie right, that they would have to show that there is um, uh, uh, irreparable, um, a potential irreparable harm as well as the uh, balance of convenience um, that needs to be in their favor, um, and that uh, there is um, no alternative remedy. No, I'm saying in outer. In outer. Yes, what do they have to show? That's Webster versus Mitchell. But um, we're talking about an interdict against the exercise of a constitutional power. I'm, I'm sorry, I have just drawn a blank. All right. Now then we look at the second issue, and it was phrased in technical terms as collateral or reactive or defensive. But let us assume that a, an organ of state has given a tender to party X, uh, but it no longer wants to carry out with the tender. And then party X comes to court and they say, I want to enforce my tender. And the government now says, no, no, no. The way in which we gave you this tender was unlawful. And that is their defense. How can they raise that defense between Paja and legality? Oh, um, in terms of, of Paja, that would be, um, would be based on um, the administrative action um, which then would invoke the provisions of, of, of PAJA, and then you would have to look at the grounds set out in a Section 6 of, of PAJA to see whether that is, um, it fits that um, requirement. And then if, if it's an organ of state, and then they say, no, we want to set aside our own decision, can they rely on PAJA? Uh, the administrative action um, in my view, is there just for um, the uh, administrative um, uh, the administrative action has to be defined within PAJA. Yes, now I understand. Yeah. Let's not go to the definition. Yes, uh, and it applies whenever... I just yeah. want to know, if I'm an organ of state, I've given yes. a tender, I don't like it. Can I rely on PAJA to set it aside? Um, an organ of state will have to rely on the principle of legality. Yes, and then PAJA will, will be applicable or not applicable? That is where there is a grey area because in some instances, if PAJA covers it, if you look at Beta Star, Beta Star is uh, the authority that says that if it fits within the PAJA um, definition, then that is how it should be adjudicated.
So as far as you understand, an organ of state has a choice between PAJA and legality. An organ, no, an organ of state would then be on the principle of legality. PAJA is for an state of action. Now I understand. Well, I'm saying, can an organ of state say, I want to go to court to challenge my own decision to award a tender or not? It has happened. Um, I know, but yeah. I'm asking what the law is because now you are the judge and I'm coming to you. I'm saying I'm acting for Transnet. We've just given this tender. We don't like it. We want to say this. And I've got an application. And you look at the notes of motion, it says in terms of PAJA. Um, Commissioner, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. All right. No, no, um, that's fine. But I would. Uh, obviously, when a matter like that serves before me, I would d double check to see whether or not it falls within um, the PAJA Act or whether or not um, they have missed the, um, the, the application um, uh, uh, requirements and maybe it should have been brought with the, uh, under the principle of legality. Um, and, and because if one looks at it, it, it is a the rule of law is what where the what the principle of legality is based on. All right. No, thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Judge President Mlam. Thank you very much, Chief Justice. Um, good morning, Ms. Andrews. Uh, good good morning, uh, JP. Um, I just need clarification. In your extensive acting. Uh, stints. You mentioned 81 weeks. These are all in the Cape Division? Yes. In what areas have you acted predominantly? The criminal or civil? In both um, areas, but uh, predominantly in the civil pool. Um, predominantly it's? In the civil uh, component. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you very much, TJ. Thank you. Thank you, JP. Uh, Ms. Andrews, we've reached the end of your interview. Anything you want to ask us? Um, no, uh, us? Chief, no, Chief Justice. Um, I'm covered, and I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present. And I'd like to thank the commissioners for the opportunity as well. Thank you for thank you. making yourself available. Excused. <laughs>